Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we're actually gonna take a look at an internet service provider by the name of Lightspeed. Uh, they're a Canadian provider out of BC that's offering some super competitive rates. And if you've never heard of them before, that's okay. Because you've probably heard of a company called Shaw before. And guess what? They use the same network. So let's get into it. Okay, so recently, my wife and I, we decided to take a hard look at where our money's going, okay? In today's economy, I'm sure this is no surprise to anybody, all right? Everything is more expensive, and we really wanted to be more conscious about what we're spending our hard-earned money on. Um, so we have been subscribing to internet and television services with the same provider for 15 years, I wanna say, easily. Yeah, 15, 18 years, somewhere in that ballpark with the same company. Okay, um, so I'm here in Canada, Manitoba specifically. So here, when it comes to internet and television, you've got two big players in the game. You've got Shaw Cable Systems and you've got Bell MTS, okay? Those are the two juggernauts that are out there. And for a lot of people, you know, we get really complacent and just realize, okay, well, you know what? This is what the internet costs or this is what TV costs. Oh well, right? I'm not an oh well kind of guy, <laughs> uh, especially when I know that there can be better value out there for the money, okay? So sure enough, I did some digging. First things first, um, our total cost for our internet and our TV package was around $180 a month after taxes, okay? Um, we stopped and we took a hard look at what did we actually watch on TV, okay? Um, and it, it, you know what? It came out to be that a lot of what we watch, we could either stream or we could receive for free with an over-the-air HD antenna, okay? So that right there, when we took a look at our breakdown, we were paying about 110 bucks a month for the internet and about 70 bucks for the television. We decided we're finally gonna be one of those people who cut the cord, okay? Um, and again, this is nothing new. It's 2023 and people have been cutting the cord forever with these alternatives. But the thing is, once you're tied into a routine with one of these companies, it's hard to make a change or hard to make a switch. Um, now, a lot of times, you know, you're given the advice of, well, hey, call the company, tell them you're gonna cancel and see what they'll do for you. In this case, the telecommunication companies, I think they're at that point already where you're incentivized as a customer to jump ship every year or two years, whatever the duration or length of your contract is. For a long-term customer, there really isn't a, a loyalty bonus or a retention bonus anymore. Sure, you may be able to find something here or there, but we were at the we were at the point where basically the well had run dry with our provider, okay? Um, so again, after kind of taking a look at what we would spend on TV, we realized, let's, let's do it, it's time. So we got rid of the TV. It was a liberating feeling, finally being able to take that step and say, yeah, you know what? We're good, we're done here with this. Um, so <clears throat> from that point, I started really thinking, okay, well, if we got rid of TV, let's take a hard look at what we're spending for internet, okay? Again, that was around $110 a month, what we were, what we were putting out there. Now that $110 a month, it got me a 300 megabit uh, per second connection up and a 15 megabit per second connection down, okay? Um, I had been doing a lot of research into these virtual network providers, okay? So companies that would either use Shaw or Bell's network, uh, but be able to provide you literally the same service at a cheaper price. So after doing a lot of research on, um, on sites like Reddit and kind of figuring out what else was out there, I realized there's way more than just two providers out here. There's gotta be probably about six or seven different virtual network providers that can offer me the exact same thing using the exact same network that Shaw or Bell is using for literally half the price. Uh, so after doing some homework, uh, I came across a company called Lightspeed, okay? Um, when, when, you, when I looked into the, into the forums on Reddit, you know, it, it, it didn't seem like they were the best, but they definitely weren't the worst either when it came to, to the service. The big difference was value for your dollar. And when I looked at what they were offering for their internet plans, they were incredibly competitive. Um, so to put things into perspective, 110 bucks a month after taxes was getting me 300 down and 15 up. Right now I'm paying after taxes about 66, 67 bucks a month, and that gets me 250 down and 15 up, 
okay? Um, now, again, with that said, the entire process with going with Lightspeed was incredibly simple and easy. Uh, I literally was able to go onto their website, uh, I was able to call into their, their tech support or, or even talk to their, their chat support online, and I was able to get really quick answers. Again, I, I lean on the internet really hard for a lot of things that I do here, especially with working from, from home or, uh, you know, gaming and a lot of our content now, especially we were going to be relying strictly on streaming. So I wanted to make sure the quality of the connection was good. Um, my initial call to them just to get services set up and to ask my questions from the time I picked up the phone to the time I hung it up was 32 minutes. Okay. That was answering all of my questions, explaining the pricing structure and what I needed to do in terms of hardware. Now, again, this was, I was pretty satisfied with that, all things considered. When I would call in for tech support with Shaw, that could be anywhere from, you know, a 10 minute wait to an hour wait just to get to talk to somebody and then even have to go through my issue. So overall, my point of first contact with the company, I was pretty impressed for the most part. That was great. It was a great experience. Um, so what happened is because I'm a current Shaw customer, meaning that I have internet services currently running to my home here, they're able to do a hot switch or a hot swap with service. Meaning that um, the day that my services agreed to be turned on, um, I can literally just connect to the cable modem that I've received from them and I'm good to go, okay? Actually, and this is what kind of blew my mind a little bit, and I should have known better from back in the day, uh, but what happens is they can actually run the Shaw service and the Lightspeed internet service concurrently provided you're each hooked up to your old cable line. And this really intrigued me. For me, this was one of the big selling points because this, is, this was gonna allow me to actually try out the service and compare it apples to apples to Shaw to see, okay, am I happy with it? Am I okay with the speed? All of those sorts of things. So sure enough, my install date was about a week, scheduled to be about a, a week from when I had actually called to get everything activated. Because again, I'm assuming there's some stuff that's happening on the back end in order for them to activate the service for me. Um, so sure enough, now just a couple of things to mention here. With Shaw, they're typically providing you with the hardware, okay? They're, they're bringing out a modem, a combination modem, router, wireless access point unit. And I'm gonna let you guys in on a little secret. Those combo units, they usually are junk, okay? <laughs> um, yeah, they're convenient because it's one box. You as an end user, you connect to the Wi-Fi and that's probably about it. Um, but there's much better alternatives out there. With Lightspeed, they offer to either sell you uh, a, a standalone modem or a combo unit, much like what Shaw has, or you could bring your own cable modem. I elected to look online at their approved modems list and I bought my own modem, okay? I paid 30 bucks off Marketplace for my own modem, all right? That means I didn't have to pay a rental fee. Uh, and sure enough, it was on. I made sure it was on their approved devices list. Uh, I was able to get it set up and provisioned with them. Took me no time at all. I then connected that to my own wireless router in my home, okay? Uh, and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna just show you the difference in speeds here, okay? Now, as you can see just from the two screenshots here and the two speed tests that we're gonna be running in the background, um, you know, speeds are essentially as advertised. Now, again, you may think, well, hey, it looks like you're getting 320, 330 with Shaw and like between 250 and 270 with Lightspeed. What's up with that? All these network providers, they over-provision their service by about 10%, okay? Um, and again, this is just making sure that you, 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 know, you can hit the, those peak or those advertised speeds when necessary. Um, so, Overall, in terms of speed, I'm very happy for what I'm getting. Now, this is gonna be the topic of another video in terms of bandwidth, okay? Because a lot of people are like, wow, 250 isn't that much different than 300. For the average user, if you're into streaming and things like that, you're never gonna notice that difference, okay? Um, but overall, internet speeds for streaming, for content consumption, absolutely great. Now, my only gripe with these folks is ping speeds, okay? Your latency. And where that makes a difference is in things like online gaming, okay? Uh, I am a huge Call of Duty fan. I love playing Warzone. I am, I am an average player, okay? I have a 1.05 KD ratio in that game. And let me tell you, my ping times, they did go up, okay? Now, here's the thing. Did they impact my quality of gameplay? I don't think so. And the reason I'm saying that is because 
ping or latency really isn't something that I even checked before. Yeah, I could notice if there was lag during, you know, during certain gaming sessions or things like that, but I really couldn't tell an appreciable difference this time around, okay? Now, it's worth saying that I think I compensated for that a little bit differently. Um, when it comes to latency or, or ping, basically that's how long it takes information to get from point A to point B, okay? That's different than your bandwidth, your upload or your download speed, okay? Now, the challenge being is here in Manitoba, you know, I've got, I've got a Shaw server, I've got a Shaw backbone, you know, right here in the same province. With Lightspeed, even though it's using Shaw's network, it moves that to BC, okay? So for me, that data physically has to travel farther. So if you're into online gaming, I'm not trying to say that it's, you know, it's not a good service to use, but it's something you wanna be mindful of. If you are an ultra competitive gamer, yeah, you, you're likely gonna notice a difference. Now, with that said, the closer you geographically are to British Columbia, the less of an impact you're gonna see because of where you're, again, because of how latency works and where you're actually located. But again, overall, I've been using the service for a couple days. I've been gaming on it. When I stop watching that ping number and I just focus on playing the game, I haven't noticed a difference measurably, okay? Um, just kind of talking a little bit in terms of the installation again. Um, one thing I wanted to do was the, the modem that I bought, uh, I bought used was a combination unit. It was an access point modem router. I wanted to put it in bridge mode. And basically what putting it in bridge mode does is it just bypasses everything else. Um, that's that all the other hardware that's there and just uses it as a strict modem. And I'm running that straight up to a wireless AX access point from D-Link. Uh, I believe I'm running a DIR X5460 right now. Okay, uh, which has been a huge upgrade over the previous Shaw modem uh, combo unit that I had here. I was using an old Hytron, I think it was a 2250. Um, again, on that note of latency, that old 2250 used a Puma 6 chipset. And I learned a lot about this stuff over the past little while. And that chipset is pretty junky when it comes to, when it comes to especially to things like gaming and latency. So good riddance to that. So I think just by moving to my own router um, and kind of optimizing my wiring in the house and having a more robust wireless network for things like that, I think I kind of mitigated some of those latency issues there. Um, so, to, so again, to go through some of the, the troubleshooting the technical support the day of, that was probably about another 40-ish minutes I spent on the phone with them. Um, truth be told, if I would have just connected this modem to my active cable line, it would have been seamless. The, the modem uh, completed ranging, gained block sync, and I was online. Um, it was just kind of taking things to that next step and really optimizing the network that had me having to call back in again. Um, but again, overall, when I take a look at it now, I went from having an internet bill that was $110 a month down to something that was 67 bucks a month, okay? 77, 87, 97, 107, 43 bucks a month back in my pocket every single month for my internet service, okay? Especially nowadays with, with inflation, with the cost of everything, who doesn't want another 43 bucks a month back in their pocket? Not to mention the extra 70 bucks a month that I'm saving now that I'm not subscribing to TV anymore and I'm using an over-the-air HD antenna, okay? So just remember, you know, there's, there's always an option. There's always an alternative here. Um, I am gonna do a video where we talk a little bit about bandwidth because people, you know, again, Shaw's, Shaw's pitch to save me you know, I, when they when they asked, well, why do you want to cancel service? And I said, well, I'm really trying to be conscious of cost. And I'm trying to save money. Do you have any cheaper speed tiers? And they told me, no. But what we could do for you is we could bump you up to a 500 megabit speed tier, but that's going to cost you an extra, you know, three dollars a month over what you're paying now. So they value they they position that as the value proposition, right? Well, hey, for only three dollars a month more, you're almost going to double your internet speed. To most people, well, yeah. 500 is more than 300. But at the end of the day, in terms of real world speed, you're not gonna notice that. So I think my goal is to put together a, a video just kind of explaining how that works so that you can end up saving a little more money. With that said, Lightspeed also offers a 75 megabit speed tier, which I honestly think is the sweet spot for a lot of people. That 75 megabit speed tier after taxes, about 45 bucks a month. And let's be real folks, that's probably what internet should cost is somewhere in that ballpark. 
okay? So again, with that said, if you're if you're thinking to yourself, man, how can I save some money on my internet bill? And really, I only have these two providers. Look into some of these virtual network providers. Look into some of these some of these other options that are out there. You can really save yourself a lot of money. Now, again, time is going to tell, you know, how reliable they're going to be and whatnot. But I put a lot of stock in the fact that they're using the same network infrastructure that Shaw does. It's literally Shaw with a different sticker slapped on it. That's kind of how I'm viewing the experience so far. Customer service has been great. The pricing model is very reasonable, okay? Uh, and so far, I've got nothing but great things to say about these guys, okay? So really, if you're thinking about making the switch, I would say take a hard look at Lightspeed and, and see if they can meet your needs or your requirements. Um, so folks, again, if you found this video helpful, if it likes, you know the drill. <laughs> Please consider giving me a like and a subscribe. Uh, and again, if you like these sorts of videos, let me know in the comments below. I'm really thinking about doing a series where we get into things like talking about internet security, uh, talking about things like, you know, how much bandwidth or how much internet speed do you really need? Because there's a lot of misinformation out there, okay? Um, so again, if you like this sort of content, please consider liking and subscribing folks, and we'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.